part of the equation on living independently and healthy as we grow older is not only how do you get from place to place, but how do you stay where you want to stay and live where you want to live. Most of us do want to remain in our homes as we grow older. How do you do that? What needs to be done to your home? How do you make sure that services can be brought into the home? And also, we know that there are migration patterns that move people into coastal areas sometimes as they grow older, and that increases a person's chance of having to withstand and live through a disaster. And so how does that come into play, both in terms of the home and independence and quality of life? I call most of our current housing stock Peter Pan housing. It was designed for people who are never going to grow up and, and never grow old. Even if people think about building their own homes in a barrier-free manner, it's quite hard for them to get the support they need. 14 million older people live in the oldest part of the housing stock. And it tends to have the worst lighting, it tends to have smaller rooms, and it tends to have steep steps. But even in the suburbs, we're building housing that's not going to work for people as they age. In 2007, 1.8 million older adults ended up in the emergency room as a result of a fall-related injury. And not all of them were in the home, for sure, but there are small things that we can do, and I think there needs to be a greater discussion about how families can do it inexpensively. We're a pretty mobile country, we're willing to relocate, but are we willing to relocate to communities that are going to meet our needs? You know, continuing care retirement communities or active living, or are we just kind of stuck until we get to the point where there's enough critical mass that the building codes do change that make our home something that we can age comfortably in? The research is, is pretty strong about the impact of modifying homes on people's ability to carry out tasks, to avoid accidents and also to increase social engagement. So the issue of accessibility and supportiveness of housing is, is a key issue. According to several studies we've conducted and our colleagues in all over Europe have conducted, one of the main reasons why people have to leave their homes is because the services are missing. And I think our job is to help them understand what their choices are when they uh, confront these situations one by one. And this is not necessarily at the point where I need the support. We do have quite clear evidence that there is change in the attitude that people want to use services, the young or old, just for comfort reasons. And this provides us with a good chance to kind of establish a new lifestyle as service oriented. And this in fact may then lead to a situation where people do not have to leave their homes because of missing services. People in their own homes know what they need. What happens is our, our clients, our customers, uh, call up and say they need a dog walker, they need a caterer, they need somebody to help fix their roof, they need somebody to water their plants because they fell down at 3 o'clock in the morning and they're going to be in the hospital for the next four weeks. We need to integrate all the available services in order to reduce the complexity for the consumers and this might be, in our opinion, a way to come up with real solutions instead of just products or services. The MIT Age Lab has done a little bit of research in the housing arena and some of the questions that we're interested in as well are questions around technology in the home and what are the questions and some of the barriers to integrating some of those technologies into the home as well as how might they be used and how might they change how we live in the future and what our lifestyles would be like in our homes. There's a lot out there in terms of being able to talk to each other through webcams and Skype and being able to check in on each other and, and I, I'm very interested in what your thoughts are on is there a role for that kind of technology? I know from a business perspective, businesses are interested in knowing. I think in general, people don't like being spied on. I mean, I'm not sure my mother would like me watching her. She might want to watch our family. See what we're doing. <laughs> All right, it dep it depends on what direction <laughs> well, I, I you want the. We were, we were talking about this at dinner last night. Part <laughs> yeah, of this is directionality. I mean, yeah. who's watching Who? whom here? <laughs> the technology part is easy. We can get devices to do all kinds of things. It's a question of, do people want to use it? Can they use it appropriately? Are they getting the maximum benefit out of it? So it's not so much the design of the device, but then it's the human factors and the interaction piece that is harder, it's much harder, that are we using it in the way that it's intended? And is it giving us the benefit? Is it improving quality of life or is it detracting? We're getting quite a few more requests from some of our quite old members about texting. And I think this is all connected with grandchildren. Are they driving? Uh, you know, it's, this, yeah. is how, this is how <laughs> I do it. Driving. I mean, to a grandchild, you know, email is just hopelessly ancient. 
even very old people are willing to adapt technological solutions if they result in a clear benefit for them. Yeah. We don't think that we're going to ever be those people who might not be able to drive and might not be able to get up the stairs. We just don't conceive of ourselves of ever needing that kind of support, so we can't anticipate or prepare for that. We can talk about this as it's a nice, nice neatly boxed kind of concept, but for us as people and for individuals that we know, we don't ever, I don't even think, think about moving out of our homes. We just are living, and then sometimes things happen from a health perspective, and certainly that can happen at any age. I know, you know the prevalence of that tends to increase as we grow older, and then we, we find ourselves in this situation. Sometimes it is a crisis, or sometimes it's a longer uh, process of recognizing health issues, and particularly when those health issues become a, a functional issue, where it impacts your ability to function in your house. That's when this becomes very real. So the question always is, you know, how do you plan ahead? How do we get people to think about it ahead? And what are the choices and the options? Thanks very much.